New batteries are going to make Volkswagen's electric cars significantly cheaper. And in addition to that, Rivian and Volkswagen are working on a cheaper electric car. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Volkswagen has been, well, it's been working on electric cars. It, it to be honest, from what we can see, it looks like it's still making a loss on electric cars. Thus, the reason for its profitability falling to record lows at its most recent um, earnings call. However, since Volkswagen has partnered with Xpeng and Rivian for much better in-car software and updating its product line, the anticipated uh, meant to be around $22,000 ID2 is coming soon. That model is going to have some big changes. So what are the big changes? Well, the biggest change is the batteries. In addition, the new car will have a brand new platform that's going to make it much cheaper to manufacture. Now, remember when they fired the CEO of Volkswagen Group because he was trying to make more affordable electric cars? Yeah, interesting that they actually ended up doing exactly what he said they should do. The biggest change on the MEB Plus platform, which is the new EB platform, is the platform using, for the first time, lithium-ion phosphate battery cells, which are probably around 30 to 40% cheaper, depending on your supplier and the, you know, the deal you can get. About 30, to 40, about 30 to 40% cheaper than the batteries that Volkswagen have been using. So the energy density is gonna be a bit lower than the nickel manganese cobalt battery cells that the Volkswagen group and most legacy automakers use, except Tesla. But LFP batteries are cheaper and they do have some other advantages. So why are they so much more popular in China? Well, one of the big advantages that newer LFP batteries have is they can charge much, much faster. This is the big advantage we've discovered over the last six to 12 months. Lithium-ion phosphate batteries capable of charging at up to 1,000 kilowatt, 800 kilowatt in some instances. Um, for example, Xpeng, 530 kilowatt. This is the kind of thing you can't really do yet with NMC batteries and had those batteries still last for a long time. So no one's really talking about this, but lithium-ion phosphate batteries... I believe for, for that key reason and some other reasons are going to have a much bigger future than batteries, lithium batteries with nickel in them. So Volkswagen says the technology will come to the rest of their MEB models, meaning other cars, the Volkswagen ID4, the ID3, the ID7, the ID5, they all are probably going to shift to lithium ion phosphate batteries. This shift will also mean that Volkswagen will redesign, redevelop a lot of their electric cars. And well, the idea is to, well, engineers are saying, okay, engineers, I actually said this to one of Volkswagen's engineers. I said, your cars are too heavy. And he said, yeah, I know, agree. So that's one of the things that they're working on. Lithium ion phosphate batteries are becoming much more prevalent. And in fact, in China, about 70% of electric cars have LFP batteries. You've probably seen BYD's new Blade batteries. There's two different versions. And one of them is capable of charging at 1,000 kilowatt. The other one has a higher energy density than BYD's existing blade batteries, which is around about 200 watt hours per kilogram. Zika's golden brick battery, that's the same, similar. A capable of charging at about 800 kilowatt charging speeds can charge a battery in eight minutes. In the United States, though, brands like Ford, General Motors, and Tesla have started using LFP. And Tesla's been doing this for years, and it's one of the key reasons why they've been able to make good profit selling electric cars when no one else was capable of doing that. LFP is one of the reasons why the Chevy Bolt EV will be able to be a similar price. That's what General Motors are saying. GM is saying, we're going to bring back the Chevy Bolt EV with lithium-ion phosphate batteries, and then we can bring it in at around $30,000. US But that's the only way they can actually do it. MEB Plus, we're not sure what's going to happen, but we do know that as a result of using LFP batteries, apparently, even in Germany, they're going to be doing it. Autocar says that Volkswagen's new Salzgitter Germany plant will supply lithium ion phosphate batteries for refresh models and a few NMC batteries for outgoing models that need them. But essentially, even European car manufacturers are saying, well, we have to pivot to LFP. It's totally essential. What about the United States? Well, there's some really big political things going on in the United States. Ford, GM, and Tesla have all said they want to build factories, and they are actually in the process of doing so, or at least Tesla is, 
to manufacture lithium ion phosphate batteries under license from the biggest battery company in the world, CATL. Now, CATL have amazing lithium ion phosphate battery technology and it's very affordable to manufacture. So basically, Ford, Tesla, and General Motors said, okay, we'll do a deal with you, which apparently is already signed off to actually build these factories in America, build the production lines, you guys give us, give us the technology and we will pay for that tech and we'll pay you a licensing fee, but we will own it. So Ford, GM and Tesla would own it. But Republicans and some Democrats don't want this to happen. They are saying, no, 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 no. We don't want anything to do with China in America. This is bad for America. I, I actually don't agree with that. I think it would be really good for American car companies to be able to use this technology. Paying a licensing fee to me is actually a, a good strategy because they will actually own that property. They'll own those manufacturing lines. They just have to pay a fee for every battery that they sell, which might be 5 or five percent or something like that. It wouldn't be a, a large amount. Now, I think that would be a good move, but pol politics and politicians in the United States have kind of muddied the waters there. And remember, there's also that battery factory that Goshan High Tech, a Chinese company, which is, I believe, 30% owned by Volkswagen. They were they'd purchased land in the United States, begun building a factory, and then it was shut down. It was shut down and there is a lawsuit going on with that now. So there's a lot of controversy right now with these lithium ion phosphate batteries. Because remember the Chinese have been working on LFP for many, many years. So they really have figured it out better than anyone else. A lot of controversy going on right now in this sector. What that means is, I mean, ultimately really, nine, more than 95% of the world's lithium ion phosphate batteries are made in China by Chinese car companies. Can American car companies actually begin doing it themselves? Well, that really all comes down to politics and really the government and what they decide to actually do. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Volkswagen just unveiled the latest version of their electric hot hatch. It's the ID3 GDX. Is it actually any good? Is it worth considering? Well, um, maybe. Let's have a look at the details and I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. So the Volkswagen ID3 GDX, this is a car sold in many countries around the world. Volkswagen have just revealed the latest version at the Shanghai Auto Show and it'll come with a standard and performance trim. I'm not sure if it's going to be the same everywhere, but it actually comes with 20-inch five-spoke rims, which is relatively big for a hatch. Uh, 